the Russians are just like the Americans, said Van Cliburn after his victory at the first Tchaikovsky piano competition in Moscow in 1958. He was inevitably called the American Sputnik for having single-handedly bridged the scientific and cultural rivalry between East and West. He returned home a hero. Chicago's Elvis Presley fan club changed its name to the Van Cliburn fan club. Variety compared his feet to Lindbergh's crossing the Atlantic. A poll had Van Cliburn as one of the outstanding men of that year, along with Pope John XXIII, General de Gaulle, and Casey Stengel. Van Cliburn's victory was the stuff that dreams are made of. Today, that dream lives on in the hearts and in the hands of every young pianist. Named in honor of Van Cliburn, a piano competition would be held every four years in Fort Worth, Texas. It would bring together the world's best young pianists to compete for the most coveted honor in music the gold medal of the Van Cliburn International Piano Competition. I've never been to the United States before, so it was a good opportunity to see Texas. <laughs> Today I went and bought cowboy boots. <laughs> yes, I was nervous if anybody wanted to know. Sort of pent up extra nervous energy. That is our good luck. <laughs> Everything went out. <laughs> I'm tired. Exhausted. I'm done. See young pianists at the most important moments of their lives, pushing their muscles and minds to the limits. Experience the joy. Join the excitement. Live the dream. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the gold medal winner of the ninth Van Cliburn International Competition, Simone Padroni. Explore with some of today's leading artists the story behind the pursuit of excellence. The ninth Van Cliburn International Piano Competition comes to PBS. I'm John Falsey, the co-creator of I'll Fly Away. Thanks to public television, the Bedford and Harper families live on. And viewers just like you made it happen through your pledges of financial support. Your dollars help bring I'll Fly Away back, and that means an awful lot to me. If you're not a contributor to this station, please take a moment to show your support for quality programs. Call the number on your screen and make a pledge. This station can bring you even more great television, but only with your support. Thank you very much. Pledge now to help stamp out the December pledge drive. Send your check to WFWA TV 39, P.O. Box 39, Fort Wayne, Indiana 46801. Or call 484-8839 during regular business hours. Next time on The Nature of Sex. All over the animal kingdom, males and females meet and mate. It could be a brief encounter or an alliance that lasts a lifetime. There's an infinite variety of ways for animals to play the mating game. But what about sex and the human animal? Curious? Of course you are. That's the nature of sex. Tonight at 9 on TV 39. Next time on Clive James' fame in the 20th century, Lindbergh, Dempsey, and Ruth become household words. Garbo talks, Groucho wisecracks, and Duke Ellington make music on the next Clive James' fame in the 20th century. Thursday at 10 on TV 39.
This business brief on TV39 is made possible in part by a grant from NBD Bank with over 60 area money mover ATMs and 22 branches to serve you. I'm Paul Kangas with a nightly business report news brief. It was Thanksgiving three days early for holiday air travelers and striking workers at American Airlines today as the flight attendants union and the company agreed to end the strike and submit their dispute to binding arbitration. Prices on Wall Street struck a sore note today as concerned over higher interest rates triggered a broad sell-off which sent the Dow Industrial Average to a closing loss of 23 and three quarter points at 36.70.25 the NASDAQ market composite index tumbled nearly 13 and a half points. Long bond prices ended down five-eighths to yield 6.39%. Finally, a Delaware judge indicated today he needs more time and probably won't rule until Wednesday on QVC Network's challenge to the anti-takeover defenses blocking its hostile bid for Paramount Communications. This has been an NBR News Brief for complete financial news. Tune in to the nightly business report weekdays on this public television station. You are watching viewer-supported WFWA. 39, Fort Wayne. The following program on WFWA TV 39 is available in stereo with closed captions for the hearing impaired and descriptive video service for the sight impaired via the SAP channel and the Northeast Indiana Radio Reading Service. East Africa, two million years ago. Our early ancestors were driven by the instinct to survive. But there's another primal instinct, one that's been motivating every creature on Earth since life began, the drive to reproduce. Sex. Without this powerful force, the world would be a much duller place indeed. In the next six programs, nature explores the wonder, the natural history, the mystery of sex. And just when we thought we understood it, sex surprises us. For seahorses, it's the proud father who gives birth. A female lizard becomes pregnant after this close encounter with another female. Crocodiles can choose the sex of their young. But some things never change, like the way we attract the opposite sex. The dating game of the natural world. After sex, new life. The final stage in this sexual journey is parenthood. Without sex, none of us would be here. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you, your local gas company and America's natural gas industry. 
fueling power plants for a cleaner environment. And by Canon, quality and innovation for the way we work and live. Canon. A primal instinct for any creature, a bee, an elephant, or a human, is to pass on its genes. To do this, sexual beings need a partner. That's why Noah's animals went onto the ark, two by two. It's also why birds sing, why flowers smell so sweet, and why men and women spend so much time and energy trying to get together. For all creatures, following the instinct to pass on one's genes is often frustrating but always fascinating. The journey begins with the search for a mate. Perhaps one of the most beautiful spectacles of nature occurs when one animal tries to woo another. We call it courtship. Every winter, Japanese red-crowned cranes perform an ice ballet, a choreographed message to the opposite sex that they are ready to mate. It's easy to see why courtship has been called the dance of life. Courtship is a way of advertising for a mate. And it's usually the males that must put themselves on display. They're the actors, the females, the audience. Male birds of paradise have long and elaborate plumage, a little impractical for flying, but the ladies find it irresistible. Males can mate with many females, but first they must compete for them. In this contest, looks score big points. These females have one mate, and so they're very choosy. This male doesn't make the cut. Male adornments come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes they're as much of an impediment to the male as they are a lure for the female. The male fiddler crab's one enormous claw may get in the way of feeding, but it's essential for his sex life, so he keeps it in excellent condition. The female does not have a giant claw and has no problem eating. But the male needs the claw for courtship. Throughout the animal kingdom, it's usually the males that compete for females and try to win their favor. Male bowerbirds are not born with their displays, they build them. For these birds, architecture is sexy. The bower is not a nest. The only purpose of this elaborate structure is to impress the female. She judges his bower as an indication of his overall quality. Since the only thing he'll contribute to the next generation is his genes, she needs to choose the best male around.
Sometimes the males decide among themselves who's the best choice. For elephant seals, only the biggest and strongest males get to breed. Dominant males are enormous, but they'll need this massive bulk in breeding season. In order to devote all their attention to sex, they will stop eating and live off their fat. As soon as the females come ashore, the battles begin. The males fight to establish dominance and win harems. Many are willing to die for that opportunity. They can't pass on their genes if they don't get the girl. Zebras have harems too, and again, some of the males never get to have sex. These young bachelors may one day challenge a stallion and take over his females. Until then, they spend these years just horsing around. These play fights enable them to practice skills they'll need when it comes time for the real thing. Stallions with harems are constantly defending their mares from hopeful contenders. winner-take-all in this mate game. When a lioness is ready to conceive, she makes the fact very clear. She becomes a bit of a flirt, walking slowly by a dominant male to make sure he notices her. Most female mammals release eggs every month, but for a lioness, it's the act of mating that triggers ovulation. Lions must mate frequently, perhaps every 15 minutes for three days. Reproduction isn't easy for them. Not only do they have difficulty conceiving, but most cubs die young. This means a male will have to mate about 3,000 times to make sure his genes are represented in the next generation. Magellanic penguins mate with the same partner year after year. The pair split up in winter to feed at sea, and somehow each spring they manage to reunite on the shores of Patagonia. For these females, one of the hardest things about the mating game is finding their mate in the crowd. The males arrived earlier to reclaim last year's burrows. A raucous fanfare erupts when the males see their old flames approaching. <laughs> A 
Amazingly, she can recognize her mate just by his call. After months of separation, they have to get reacquainted. The chemistry is still there. They mate near the family burrow. <laughs> 